Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Gary GZ Duels, and today we're doing the deck profile for the Bujin deck uh, for the January 2014 format. I'm very excited to bring you this deck because it's uh, been very successful, one of the highest winning rates. Um, when I do a deck, I tend to keep track of how many uh, how many times I win versus how many times I lose, and it's uh, without telling you guys exactly how much, um, it's been one of the highest winning rates uh, on the Dev Pro ranked and unranked games. So without further ado, let me get into the deck profile itself. I have two Bujin Mikazuchi, three Bujin Yamato, um, two Turtles, one Hair. Um, I'm a believer in the Hair. I think that it's one of the strongest first turn moves. I know a lot of players like to go first turn Turtle. Uh, but I think hair is the most basic thing you should go for because in case your opponent destroys you flat out, like if he has like a dark hole or something, that's something that you can't protect with uh, the turtle. So I believe in one hair. I also believe in one centipede. Um, the reason why the Bujin archetype is good because of these um, things that activate in the hand in the graveyard, they can be easily accessible. Whenever you need something, you just have to wait a turn, let Yamato get it for you, and you're set. So running one copies of each is not that much. One bear because because it helps you remove a lot of the problem monsters. Plus, if you draw it, you can also search for Tenki, which searches for Yamato, which is somehow fair. Uh, two of these Quillen uh, and three Cranes and one Honest, as well as two Effect Veilers. For spells, we have one Bujin Carnation. I don't think that Bujins really want to uh, depend on uh, recovery play uh, although that sometimes happens but i think that one is okay it's searchable as well uh three pod duality because you don't really normally special summon so uh pod duality is just like a free thing for you for this deck uh three uh mystical space typhoon unlike most people bujin players they think that with centipede in their deck they're fine with like maybe two mystical space typhoon that might work most of the time but i don't believe that because our meta currently has a lot of uh has a lot of continuous spell and traps that really hurt this Bujin deck. So if your opponent somehow main decks uh, a uh, main decks a uh, royal decree or something like that, or if your opponent main decks a uh, impure iron wall, or if you're playing against uh, gravekeepers and they first turn go into something like a um, necro valley, you can't do anything to that necro valley with your centipede because your centipede has to be banished from the graveyard and necro valley doesn't allow that and uh you know that's just something that you need mst for as well as one uh, book of moon very versatile two forbidden lands um, using it offensively as well as defensively and three tanky somehow we're at three and somehow it's fair to be able to instantly search yamato as well as give him a hundred boost and uh, so why not uh for the traps we have one uh bottomless uh one uh sword it's not that bad. It's searchable. It's something you can get easily from uh, Mikazuchi. Uh, also, it's not a bad effect. You know, sometimes you want to reuse a particular crane, or if you want to bring back the turtle, or if you want to bring back hair, which would help you protect your Amato, then, you know, this is not that bad. But it is pretty situational. So running it at one as a tech card, it's something good to consider. Um, I main deck the two Vanity's Emptiness rather than uh, Kaiser Coliseum because uh, I believe in having Mikazushi out at the same time as Yamato. I really like that <clears throat> there are people, there are players who will hold on to their Mikazuchi until their opponent somehow gets rid of Yamato, gets destroyed, and then they summon out Mikazuchi. So it's like one replaces the other. But I'm more more of the play play style of just like controlling the uh, controlling the field as well as pushing your advantage at the same time. And since the Bujin archetype really doesn't special summon too much from the main deck, uh, it really doesn't add to a downside. Plus, uh, the the only downside is that it will just get destroyed by its own effect. That's it. So, you know, I, I thought, why not? And uh, in fact, I think it's sometimes better than Kaiser Coliseum because uh, Kaiser Coliseum requires that you have a monster on the field. Now, uh, if you're playing Bujins, the first the first, uh, the first game you play, it might work out. You might be able to get, get away with it. But the second time that you play, your opponent's going to side in things that gets rid of your Yamato right away. And if they get rid of Yamato and they OTK you by spamming the field with uh, Synchro or XYZ monsters, then you're in a terrible situation. But even if they get rid of Yamato while you have Vanity's Emptiness, that's another obstacle, another hurdle they have to cross over. So I think it's more dependable. Uh, also, you have other cards in the deck that stay on the field, like Fiendish Chain, so you can negate monster effects without, you know, getting rid of this uh, Vanity's Emptiness per se. So I run two of these uh, Fiendish Chain as well, and uh, not to not to just like just to make it make sure that your Bujins are safe. Bujins are safe from monster effects. I also have a Divine Wrath. 
uh, which may be kind of overkill, but I really like this card. Um, other decks, my main deck, something like a tech in um, Phoenix and Wing Blast. Um, it's not a bad card, uh, but I like this one because it gets to negate effects from anywhere. Uh, any monster effect from the graveyard, hand, field, whatever, you get to get rid of it. Plus, it's a counter trap, so I really like it this way. And as well as the one uh, warning. In the extra deck, we have one uh, Gaia Thunder Charger. I saw some uh, some player on uh, Bujin player on YouTube use this. It's not bad because uh, you might think, well, you're in, you're a deck full of level four. So how are you going to get into that? Well, there's a system here. You can use this to uh, replace the uh, the Ptolemy M7 that you have. And you can use Ptolemy's M7 to replace the uh, Omega once you run out of material. So it has a lot of longevity so that you know you don't special summon normally, but if you happen to special summon, there are times where you can use that one special summon to your advantage multiple times. And this might be good so that if you go into an Omega first, use up Omega's materials, go into the Ptolemy's M7, use up its material, and then go into uh, Gaia Thunder Charger just for piercing damage. Uh, so with that said, of course, I have one Ptolemy M7, one Crazy Box, one uh, Bujin, Kag Bujin Kagutsuchi. It's not bad. I don't usually go into it. Two of the Suzunowa. I feel like it's more dependable. You get to search. You get to ditch cards. It's um, just very reliable. Plus, attacks all monsters. Sometimes it's an overpowered effect. Uh, Kanzala Omega, like I said. Uh, Black Ship of Corn, as well as the SH Arc, the Silent Honor Arc. It's pretty good. It's one of the, I think it's much better than Exciton Exc Knight um, because it's just very versatile. If your opponent has a face up uh, special summon monster, summon this, steal it. It also has like a Maze Stroke protection effect for itself, so it's pretty good. As well as one Diamond Dire Wolf. Paladynamo because you can go into it. Exciton Knight because like why not? Uh, in case you know you have like a Bujin Carnation. Wait, you can't. Bujin Carnation restricts you, but it's okay. Uh, but you know, in case you need to turn around the duel, um, you know you'll have this at your disposal as well as the Maze Stroke, uh, Abyss Dweller, and uh, Gaga Cowboy for finishing off games. In the side deck, we have two Satan Claws. is really good. I ju I just think it's a really good side deck card. It it trumps everything. Your opponent has a brilliant setup you can deconstruct it your opponent has a problem monster you can get rid of that you know it's just not bad in the mirror it definitely helps and uh okay two maxis because your worst enemy is one control decks that try to like you know get rid of your your yamato by spell of traps the other one is decks that try to overwhelm you with their speed and uh you might want to have maxi to just like um <clears throat> mitigate that uh, two uh, system down because you know um, the top deck. I believe the top deck of the format right now is Karkuri, uh, Girgia. Um, I think that they're the top deck because they're able to special summon any deck that can special summon a lot at minimal cost. To expand the field, can draw cards with Burado, change ba monster battle positions. I think will have significant advantage. Plus, you know there's just a lot of um, good machine monsters running around. Like Draco's Hack is a machine monster, so it wouldn't hurt to have system down in your extra deck. Uh, two Twister because, like I said, sometimes you'll you'll need Twister to get rid of um, Necro Valley as well as uh, Imperial Iron Wall. Um, it just also helps to get rid of other things like field cards, just field cards in general. Kaiser Coliseum, I do believe that it is a good card, and if a deck that if I'm facing a deck that special summons a lot, I will side this in as well. In addition to the Vanity, in addition to the Maxi, I just think it makes sense. You want multiple answers to one problem. Um, Two Dust Tornado, with that said, multiple answers to a problem. The third Vanity's Emptiness is just a good card in general. I think that you should use it because you should take advantage of the fact that the Bujin archetype doesn't special summon while almost every other archetype special summons a lot and use that to your advantage so that Vanity's Emptiness is almost perfect for this deck. As well as two debunks, uh, notwithstanding the um, Vanity's, and notwithstanding the Divine Wrath and all these other <clears throat> monster negation uh, cards in my deck, I still like de uh, Debunk. Um, I think Debunk is uh, a good card against decks that especially use effects from the hand or the grave so that you know you can adjust your cards accordingly. So if your opponent is playing Mermails, you probably won't need uh, the Venus Chain as much because their effects on the field are not as important um, so that you might want to consider subbing them in for Debunk. So just, uh, just a thought right there. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. I hope it was informative. It wasn't like too long or too boring. If you have any questions on the deck, please feel free to like drop Drop a comment. I'll I'll reply to you um, if I uh, have the right answer. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Nonetheless, this is Gary GC Duels signing out.